Hello, this is Mikey K from Scratch, and welcome to the next exciting episode of Game Development for Complete Beginners. And today we finally start using Love, our game engine. So we're past the basics of Lua. If you followed along to this point, you should know enough Lua to continue on and start doing something very dangerous. So congratulations, you're part of the way there. And today what we're going to do is look at getting Love up and running and create our first Love application. Uh, now, I mentioned this in the optional video describing exactly what Love is, and I recommend you watch that now if you want a bit more detail. But the short answer is, Love is a custom implementation of Lua. So instead of running Lua, like we've done from the command line, Lua 5.2 and then run our program, we're instead going to be running Love. So first things first, you're going to have to go ahead and download it. And as I just mentioned with what I was just talking about, if you want more details on exactly how uh, Love is and Love works, um, I will link the video down below because it goes into a bit more detail about exactly what is implemented behind the scenes. Uh, so anyways, if you haven't already, you need to go ahead and get Love. Now, I'm, God, I'm going to try and keep away from all the obvious puns today. So if you see me missing a great opportunity for a pun... Ah, uh, trust me, they'll get old fast, so I'm trying not to make them. Uh, but anyways, once you find love, har har har, um, you just go ahead to love2d.org, pick your platform of choice, and go and get it. Now, generally, you can get away with just using the zip version, regarding whatever, regardless to whichever platform you are running on. Uh, just pick whichever one you want. For example, I'm on 64-bit uh, Windows, so I'll go ahead and do the right thing and grab the 64-bit Windows version. 32-bit version would work just fine on a 64-bit platform, by the way. Um, but it comes down, and it is just a zip file. So go ahead and open that up when it's down, and you'll see the contents of it are just a folder, and inside the folder are the uh, DLLs and executables that make up love. So it's really simple. You just take this folder right here and copy it somewhere. Now in my case, I've already installed it, so I copied it into the dev folder, and you'll see it right there. Um, just copy it in, and you're good to go. Now just like you did with Lua before, there's a good chance you probably want to add it to your system path. Um, now, doing this on Mac or Linux is a slightly different process. You have to add it to your dot .profile. Uh, on Windows, you can get away with it in, um, just go to My Computer, or in my case, File Explorer, More, and then Properties. But it's, uh, if you're on Windows 7 or 8, uh, right-click My Computers and get Properties. And just go in here to uh, Advanced System Settings, and go to Environment Variables. And what you want to do is find the guy named Path. It's right here. Just open it up and edit it, and you'll see I put an entry in for, there's one for Lua earlier, and there's one here for Love. So just go ahead and add a new one, and then add the path to Love, and then you're good to go. Uh, you don't have to do this part, but it allows you to use the um, program from the command line without having to put the directory to it. Otherwise, every time you use it, so with the way my computer's set up right now, I can go ahead and type um, anywhere and it will go ahead and run love. Now, it didn't find any files, uh, but it did run it. Now, otherwise, I would have to do is go d colon slash dev slash love dot 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 slash love every single time I wanted to run it. So putting it in the path prevents you from having to do this every time. So it is a time saver. If you're going to be working from the command line, I recommend you do it. But that's it. That is the installation process for love. It is that simple. And you can tell just run the command love when you're... Um, Open up command prompt, run the words love, and you will get this window. Or at the same time, you can just open it up in File Explorer or whatever your preferred file browser is and run it the same way. So love.exe and we are good to go. Now, structure of a love program is very important. What you need to do is create a directory and I've gone with the incredibly logical name of Untitled. And in that directory, at the root, you need to make a file called main.lua. So that's the most important part. Just make sure that file is in there and called main.lua. That's critical. It looks for that file. So when it's trying to load your game or your application, it is going to look for a file named uh, main.lua in the root directory. And then once you've got it, you can actually run your app be a drag and drop if you wish. So um, I can come back here and go, let me just put two side by side like that. All right. Uh, so over here, I shall locate the love executable like so. So what you can do is simply drag the directory that contains your main.lua 
and drop it right on love. And this will go ahead and run your game. Now our code, we have no code right now. So obviously, instead of getting that default screen that shows if there's no application, you will instead get a window that is empty because we've not done anything. You can see up top, it's running a script called in, um, Untitled, uh, but it's doing nothing. And we're gonna fix that in a minute. Now at the same time, you can do the same thing from the command line as we just saw. If you switch into the directory, so cd slash temp slash untitled, that's the location where, so if I do a dir here, you'll see main.lua is there. It's empty, but it's there. So now all you need to do to run is just run love. And it'll look for that file in the, oops, sorry, I need to actually do, I need to go up one directory. Come on, give me focus. Why don't I have, oh, I'm off screen. Ha. Okay, love, and then, so it knows the directory, and you'll see once again, there's this black screen. So that is how you launch Love. There's not a lot to it. Now at the same time, you can take that directory and turn it into a zip file if you wish and change the extension from .zip to .love and then you can run it that way as well. Doesn't really matter. That's one of those things you'd get later on if you were deploying it to someone else to play with. And there's even more options. We can turn our Love um, file into an executable that runs itself so you can send it out to anybody like a, just like a normal program. But for now, this is how we run Love. So either we run it from the directory we want to run it from, or we run it by drag and drop. You can pick which route is your preference. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Just be aware, if you run love and you get this screen for some reason, it's because it didn't find your project. So you'll see right here, I didn't pass in the, the name of it, so we got the default. So I really gotta stop using bad names like untitled, but there you go, so there is the difference. It will either run it or you get that graphic that we just saw a second ago if it can't find it. So we now have love installed, we now have love somewhat configured, Let's look at our first game. Now, we're not going to do a lot of coding in this example. We're actually going to do almost no coding because there is a lot of concepts to cover very quickly here. Now, Love itself is a game engine. That means it provides all of the functionality of a game. Things like drawing graphics, handling input, uh, audio, networking, all those things. And your game itself, your script, your main.lua, and then anything we build out from there, those put all those pieces together to actually make your game. So the, the engine provides the, um, the bits and bobs, the... Uh, the template with which to make a game, all of the functionality you need to make a game, and then you make the game itself. Now, a really key concept in all of this, not just for love, but in every game ever made with any game engine or roll your own, whatever. Ultimately, at the heart of it all, there is something called a game loop. A game loop is essential to understanding a program. So I spent the last way too long, to be honest, doing this funky graphic. And let me just find it game loop. Here we go. So this is the game loop. And actually, this is a little bit more than a game loop. Technically, this is the game loop. This is the entire life cycle of a game. And they all work like this for the most part. Now, some of the pieces move depending on where you work from, but every single game out there works somewhat like this. And basically, you have the game starts, so the user clicks the executable. The game launches. At this point, initialization happens. This is where you do your setup. Um, if you have to load files, if you have to do some, um, say you're Minecraft and you need to procedurally generate the world, the stuff that happens up front. And you'll notice games take a long time to load and then go about things. Well, that's the setup phase. Every game has one to a certain degree, even if you don't do anything in it, it's there. So basically you have game start, game setup, and then once the game is set up, we start the game loop. And here's a simplified version of it. But basically a loop is exactly what it sounds like. We saw them earlier when we were looked with while loops, dual and for loops. It's, that's all it really is. It's just this set of code that runs over and over and over and over until a certain condition is met. And for a game loop, generally that condition is end the game. Either the user hits the escape key and it sets end the game to true, or they hit alt F4, or whatever. Some, something happens that, or it's set up, maybe your game's very harsh, and if the user dies, it exits after that. That sets the condition to say, okay, stop running through this loop. But until that happens, we loop through again and again and again and again, doing certain things. And generally they, they start with and go in order of check for input, um, then what we'll do is update the physics if we have a physics engine. 
uh, update the game itself. So you take, um, if you press the key to move your character to the right by three pixels, this is where you would say, all right, move to the right by three pixels. And then finally, you draw it. And now after you draw it, you go to the next loop. And then again, and again. So basically, you know, check input, update the world, draw the screen, check input, update the world, draw the screen, check the loop, over and over and over and over again until the game is done. And it sounds very simple, but essentially that is how every single game and every single game engine actually work. And then when you hit that condition where that loop is done, then you go to the cleanup phase where you get rid of, you know, good housekeeping, you get rid of any memory you've used, you erase any temporary files you've made, and then you exit. And that is essentially, in the heartbeat, how a game works. Now, I tell you this because it's critical to understand that part initially, this loop part. In the case of love, love runs that loop. Love is the one doing the loop behind the scenes in their own code. And you deal with it through something called a callback. Now, callback is a universal concept. It's used in pretty much every single programming language to a certain degree. And what a callback is simply is a set of code you hand to another piece of code to be called in a certain situation. So it's kind of like, you know, if you get a busy number and they said to you, okay, well, when we're free, would you like us to call you back? Thus the name callback. And what you do is you hook into these callbacks to, to when you get to certain stages in this loop or in this process, you tell love, when you get to this point, call me. When you get to this point, call me. When you get to this point, call me. And essentially that is how you structure your game. It's really a simple concept to get your head around once the basics sink in. If this makes sense to you, then program flow in love should totally make sense to you. Now keep in mind some of these steps like begin and set up, clean up and end will only ever happen once in your entire game. Whereas this loop here happens what we would literally call every frame. It happens as fast as your computer can run. And there's there's some concepts, advanced concepts I'm not gonna get into right now. Like sometimes this loop runs as fast as possible but it only draws at a certain frame rate or it only updates at a certain speed or quite often say physics for example only update at 30 hertz or 60 hertz which means 30 or 60 times per second. So even though this often runs as fast as possible, sometimes it doesn't, that's not particularly important. What you need to be aware of is this chunk here happens over and over and over and over and over again, and that is where you implement the heart of your game. So now let's take what we just learned and put it into uh, action. Now, I've been talking about this a little bit in the past, and I'm gonna say it one more time. You need to have a function called main.lua. So when your game starts up, love is going to look for a file called main.lua and then just get really angry if it doesn't find it. So you need to provide main.lua and main is called main for a reason. It's from the C world and main is the name of a function in C where your program starts. Um, so they're just keeping that convention. It could have been called whatever they wanted to. They went with main. They look for a file called main. You do not provide that file. Love is not happy. So the starting point or the entry point of your game is this script. Your code starts at the very top of the script when it is loaded by love. Now, the most important part though is we're going to be implementing these callbacks. And the callbacks are provided, so not only is it going to look for a script called main.lua, once it finds it, it's gonna look for functions by a certain name as well. And those names are, and we'll start with a very simple one, is function, um, so there we go, we're declaring that we're creating a function, we covered this earlier in the function section. So we're creating a function called love dot, and then this one's gonna be draw. Like so. So for the phase here through the loop, this render section, now what's going to happen is love is going to look for a function called love.draw and call it every time that event occurs. And inside of this is where you put the stuff for handling drawing stuff on screen. And that's really all we're going to try and accomplish here. So what we're going to do is go love.graphics.print uh, hello world, which is starting program in every case and who am I to be different. Now what changes it up a bit from being on the command line is we're also passing in coordinates. And I will explain coordinates a little bit later, but this is essentially telling love where to draw this text because we're not actually in text mode anymore. So here is the program. So what's gonna happen is when we run this, 
it's going to look for main.lua script, and then it's going to look for when it hits the draw phase. It's going to say, okay, I want to draw something. What code do I call? And it's going to call this one. So all of these naming conventions are basically provided by love for you. And there's a couple more. I'm going to cover a couple more today, but I want to go ahead and show you how this code works. So when it goes ahead and runs, there you go. So instead of getting that gibberish and nothing else, we can now see there is our text inside of our love application. And I could have sat here and instead changed this to 100 by 100. So we're going to draw it in a slightly different location. And there you see the end result. So that is how the game loop works. That is how a callback works. So this is the draw callback that love is calling. Now this convention, this love.draw, this is sort of like what we saw with tables can have methods or, or functions or variables, etc. So what we're saying it's in the love table, call the method dot draw. Now it's pretend for a second, this is an advanced topic. It's actually not a table. It looks like a table, but don't worry about that particularly. So in your head, just think of love as a table or in another program as a namespace. Or, and if you go back to the love website, you'll actually see there's a huge collection of these things, of these modules that are available. They're provided by love and they look like Lua code to you. And what you see here is we got love is the top level uh, module or namespace. And we've got, you know, the one we just used was dot graphics, but there's also dot font, dot file system, dot event, dot audio, dot physics, and inside of each one are even more. So we've got all of these different types. We've got like, so we just use print, for example, so we got love.graphics.print. And don't worry, we're gonna cover a ton of these functions and these different modules, etc. So don't get overly worried about that at the moment. But when we went ahead right here and said love.graphics, we're saying in the love game engine, in the graphics module, call the function print. And then it's just like functions we covered in the past. We're gonna pass in this string of hello world and then these two numbers to say where to draw it. And that's it. So that is your first love program. Congratulations, you just created it. I'm gonna show you two other things very, very quickly. Uh, other uh, callbacks that are available. And these aren't called as part of the main loop. Well, not generally. There's also love, uh, sorry, function love.update dt. And this is now called every frame. So this love.update is the same as love.draw, but it's instead of being in charge of um, drawing stuff on screen, it's in charge of updating your game's position, things in your world, the state of your game. And it is also the equivalent of, come on, this guy right here. So you'll notice it happens before render or before draw, uh, but it is called, again, every single pass through the loop. Now, the big thing that you'll notice here, different, is that it gets a parameter, and that parameter is dt or delta. This is the amount of time that happens since the last pass through the loop. We'll, we'll cover in a bit why that's useful, just be aware of it. So you can see there's all these various callbacks that are being called at various stages in the program's execution. In a lot of games, these two are all you ever need. But on top, there's other ones. And I'm not gonna cover all of them today, but two key ones are uh, load, oh, love.load, which is called once at the beginning of your program before it starts in the loop. So this is called once to set things up. This is basically the equivalent of setup. And this is where you would come in and load files you needed or generate them if procedural, etc. And then we got another one called function love dot quit. Oh, not quiet. Quit. And I'm willing to bet you can guess when this one is called. And so love dot quit is essentially cleanup. So that's it. That is a very simple end-to-end -end of a love program, the complete program flow. <clears throat> now, obviously, there's a bunch more to it. There's things like handling input, uh, polling, uh, event-driven, etc. We'll cover all of those in time. I just want you to get the very basics down, and we just did. So hopefully that all made sense. If it didn't, let me know in the comments down below. And once again, I'm going to link to that earlier video I did that explained a bit more about what's going on in love behind the scenes, a bit more about what game engines are, etc. So if you want a bit more backstory, if I lost you a little bit here on what love is doing, check that guy out. It should help you along. Uh, so next time, we'll get into a little bit more in depth of actual coding in love. So we're at that point now. We're going to start creating games. Hope everything is clear. See you all soon. Bye.